First Chronicles chapter 4. Still in the family of Judah. And we're going to run into some hardships as you study. That's why the Bible says study. Some things that I learned. And verse 1, the sons of Judah, that's in the line of Jesus Christ. Pharaoh, that's in the line of Jesus Christ. Hedron, Carmi, Her, and Shabul. And Reeliah, the son of Shobol, begat Jophath, and Jophath begat Alumini and Lehad. These are the families of the Zerites. And these were the father of Etali. Now, we've been reading names after names after names. And came to the thing is that now we're running into not only human names, but we're running into names of cities now. And the father of Etani is the father of this land. Etani is a city. And when you get as the founding fathers of America, and when you study the Bible and you start studying, you look at these names, well, something ain't right here. And then when you look up the, the names and, and concordances and Bible help, then you come across, oh, this is not a person. And when you come across these things, you're going to find out they either can be a person or they could be a, na a, a city or it could be a city named after somebody, such as Washington State, Washington City, Washington Town, Washington County, Washington, D.C. So now you got your broad sense of studying even more. And the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. Okay, so rightly dividing. Yeah, we know this dispensation, we know this dispensation, we know this belongs to the Jews, this belongs to the church, this belongs to the world. This name belongs to a city, it doesn't belong to a person. That's a further. And Chronicles is one of them books that, you know, it's hard, like the book of Acts in Hebrews. And Jezreel and Ishma. And Ishbash, and the name of their sister was Hathaponai. And Penil, the father of Gibdor, that's a city. And Ezra, the father of Husha. And you look up that one, that could be a person or that could be a city. But if you're going to go with the contents of the Bible and what we've now learned in Chronicles, you would aim in the direction as you see the father of would be probably a city. And it's not known today what it is, what it was. And these are the sons of her. The firstborn of Ephata, or Ephah, the father of Bethlehem. Now let's take our Bibles and math, I mean, excuse me, Micah 5 2. Micah 5 2. Because this is important. This is in the line of Jesus Christ. Now, Bethlehem was given to the tribe of Benjaminites. Jebusite was given to the Benjaminites. Not Bethlehem, excuse me. Jer Jerusalem was given to the Bethlehemites. Uh, I'm messing this up. Benjamin had Jerusalem. Jebusite. Now, when we're looking at Micah, chapter 5, verse 2. Going with Chronicles, but thou, Bethlehem, that was in our Chronicles, Ephata, that's in our Chronicles, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, that's what we're talking about in our chapter, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, God, that is to be ruler of Israel, whose goings forth have been from the old, from everlasting. We have a prophecy of the place mentioned in our first chronicles study, Boring Chronicles. 
and we're not going to be done with it yet. Now, if you want, keep your place in Micah and go to Matthew and watch. Watch show up in Matthew chapter 2, verse 6. And we'll pick off in verse 5. And this is the Magi coming, the wise men coming, following the star. Get your eyes off three. Get your eyes off Chinese, Japanese, which they're not. Because this is men of the east, verse 1. And Jacob entered the men of the east when he goes for Laban. But let's look at what's important. And verse 3, Herod the king had heard these things. He was troubled in all Jerusalem with them. When he gathered the chief priests and scribes the people again and demanded them where Christ should be born, did they know? And they said unto him, Bethlehem of Judea. Well, did they quote it completely? They're missing Ephrathah. It's in First Chronicles. It's in Micah. The land of Judah, that's Greek for Judah, that's okay, art not least among the prince of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. So, I mean, you, you've got a thing here that the verses don't match. They're not quoting verbatim. But it's important. Because when we come back over here to... First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 4, there it is. And there are probably other Bethlehems, and this one of Ephata of Judah, chapter 4, verse 1. We are in the name and we are the place of the birth of Jesus Christ. Never mind, you know, it was a manger. Never mind, there was no room at the end. Here is Jesus Christ, First Chronicles, a uh, uh, boring book, verse 4. So, we also have something else here. When we run ourselves to chapter 2, verse 49, chapter 2, verse 49, She bare also Shifa, the father of Madamiah. That's a city, maybe, or a person's name. Shiva, the father of Mechabaniah. That could be a person or city. That father, see? And the father of Gibeah, the daughter of Caleb, was Achisa. And remember, we ran that to Joshua 15, 17, that is the Caleb that says, I want that mountain that God promised me, and there is my daughter, and I am going to give her a piece of land, and one of his brethren took his daughter to wife by getting rid of the giants. These were the sons of Caleb, the son of her, the firstborn of Epita. There it is again. There it is again. Shophia, uh, the father of Kirch of Jerem, that's a city. Well, when we run back over here, chapter 4, verse 4, the son of her, the firstborn in Ephata, the father of Bethlehem. It says Shobo was the father, I mean, it says the firstborn of Ephata. And when we read more, verse 51, and the father of Shema was the father of Bethlehem. We come back over to verse 4 and verse in chapter 4. It says, Father of Bethlehem was Ephata. We got a problem. And you can go online, or there are books I'm told out there, but I know you can do this online specifically. You can look up contradictions in the Bible. And they're out there. They're web pages. If you want to find them, they're out there on the website. But there are times when you find there's trouble in the pro problem in the Bible, and I found them, by studying. And when you study one passage with another, not that you got it online, it's like you look at this passage and you look at that passage, and that's what some of the problems are. Well, there is a problem as far as my comprehending. 
Now I'm going to, I was told when I learned the Bible that I am allowed to use people's brains that I don't have. You can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quote the source so get proper credit on a problem text by Peter S. Ruckman. And some people are going to get upset that I use that. And what we're going to look at is 1 Chronicles 4.4 4 and 1 Chronicles 2.50. And it says, Peniel the father of Geber, and Ezra, Ezer the father of Eshved, these are the sons of Hurt, the firstborn of Ephda, and the father of Bethlehem. And then these were the sons of Caleb, the son of Hur, the firstborn of Ephda, Shobat, the father of Kirjav Jerem, 1 Chronicles 2 5. And it says, there is, I'm going to read as he puts it, because I don't understand families, uncles, aunts, cousins, all that. So I'm going to read this very slow. There is no Caleb, the son of Hur. In our hers list of sons given in First Chronicles 4 4. First Chronicles 4 4, there, there's no Caleb mentioned. He's missing. So we got a problem with Caleb. The answer again is quite simple. I'm glad he says that. I've read this four or five times and I, I don't get it. There are two Caleb's. I got that part. But when he goes into the family ways, that's where I lose it. All right, there's two Caleb's. I believe that. One is Hezron's son, 1 Chronicles 2.18. Now let's look at 1 Chronicles 2.18. It says, Caleb, the son of Hezron. That's Caleb number one. I got that. And maybe if I do it out loud, may I get it. This Caleb marries Ephra. Who bore him her, 1 Chronicles 2 19. And when Adesva was dead, Caleb took on to him Ephra, that's his wife, which bare him her. So here is a woman and a husband. So Ephra, E P H R A T H, and you look at the Ephra. I'm trying to find my place here. Uh, I just saw it. Verse 50, E P H R A T H. And then chapter 4, verse 4, E P H R A T A H. It's a place, and it also looks like a woman's name. Who bore him her, and we saw that in 219. This her. Who gave birth to the second Caleb, 1 Chronicles 2.50. These were the sons of Caleb, the son of her, the firstborn of Ephraim. Now, now this is where I start getting, I start losing it. I hope you can get it, this family. So it says, this her is who gave birth to the second Caleb. For her was the firstborn of Ephraim, we just read in 2.50. Observe that Caleb is said to be the son of Hezron, 1 Chronicles 2.18. Although he is not listed in the sons of Hezron born unto him in 1 Chronicles 2.9. Go to 2.9. See, it takes studying. I don't know how ministers can get this one passage of scripture and go 45 and 60 minutes of fluffy tail. Man, there's so much in here. And what did verse I say? 2-9. Two 2-9. Nine. Two nine. Now the sons of Hezron, and that's over in verse 18. The sons of Hezron, these were born unto him, Jezreel and Ram and Chulabiah. That Chulabiah has to be the Caleb. Or I can be wrong. Uh, observe that Caleb is said the son of Hezron, although he's not listed as sons of Hezron, born un, unto him in First Chronicles 2.9. This means that Caleb can be the son of her, First Chronicles 2.50, though not be listed as sons of her, begat in First Chronicles 2.20. With the time element, element from Hezron to second Caleb Joshua 15 13 it is certain that the second Caleb first Chronicles 2 18 was a grandson of her that is you got Hezron 
You got Caleb. You got her. You got Jephunneh. And Caleb is the son of Jephunneh. Joshua 15, 13. And, Joshua, and then Caleb, Joshua 15, 13. There's a Caleb of Joshua whose father is Jephunneh. And that's about as far as I can take it. I don't. I hope you understood. I didn't. But I'm going to take the Bible. In. It's my, what I don't understand is my error. I am not going to throw the Bible out. One day, if I put a big question mark there, maybe one day I'll read through it. And God say, "Well, here's the answer." But other than that, I am wrong. I am I am mistaken, and not the Bible. So let's move on to verse five, chapter four, verse five. And Asher, the father of Tekoa, that's a city. Look at Amos chapter 1. Again, here we go. Let's go with scripture to scripture. Let's look at these books of the Bible that are ever not called upon in churches. Isn't it funny how we've been looking in books of the Bible? That, when's the last time you heard Amos? Open your Bibles to Amos. Open your Bibles to Chronicles. Open your Bibles to Micah. When's the last time your church has opened those books? Amos 1.1. 1, 1, and the words of Amos, who was among the herdmen of... There it is. It's a place. Tekoa. And when I went through these names, I was mistaken and I was wrong to think all these names, except for Bethlehem, were men or women's names. And I, I was wrong. And I'm starting to mark through as we study through Chronicles. I am marking the places green as cities and not people. Like verse 42, the father of Hebron. Well, I knew Hebron was a, a city. But look at the rule again. Think of Washington. These are cities who have been named for a man. It could be the man that it's named for. We read earlier in Chronicles 1, us. We saw there were two us's, but there was a man named us. That man established the city of us where we read about Job. So we got to look. We got to read. We got to study. We got to look other places in the Bible. We got to ask God in prayer and say, God, this numbskull brain of mine. So Tekia had two wives, Hila and Nara. And Nara begat him at his exam, and Hefer and Timini and Hashastari. These were the sons of Nara. Now, it maybe would be easier too for us Americans, English, that, you know, Fred, Tom, Sam, Julie, Carol, you know. You've got names right here we don't even know how to pronounce. And even if you have a Bible that pronounces the name, that has the self-pronunciation, that's the English. That's not Hebrew. We're reading Hebrew names in the English. So, <laughs> give it your best. When you're reading the Bible, not teaching about it, just look over the names. At least to say, God, you know, I looked over each word with my eyes. As I try to read forth your word. And the sons of Hela were Zerath, Jezor, and Ethanin. I don't know it all. I I miss a lot. And Coles begat, and is that the kind of man you want teaching you the Bible? You know, you can say, I don't know. I've got to study that out. That's a lot better than someone standing in a pulpit giving you a bunch of lies. And calls up beget Adnud, Anub, and Zeba, and the families of Arhel, the son of Haram. Okay. Now the next part, if there's really a next part, but let's say there's a next part. We're going to go into the vast, great study. Are you ready? Of the books that are in Christian bookstores about Jabez. We're going to do a, con a complete, exhaustive study tonight on Jabez. Are you ready? Here we go. I mean, there are all kinds of books about Jabez. And Jabez was an honorable 
was more honorable than his brethren. Brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles. And his mother called his name Jabez. All right, this is why. Saying, because I bear him with sorrow. So Jabez has a meaning of sorrow. And that comes forth of Genesis chapter 3. When God told Eve, in sorrow thou shalt bear children. Okay. We don't even know what his, what his mother's name was, but there she is. Now this is why we study and we have books in the Christian bookstore and probably sermons up a mountain full of Jabez. You ready? The prosperity gospel. Called on God of Israel. Saying, oh, that thou would bless me indeed. You see the prosperity? And enlarge my coast. You see how great it is? If you give $10, God will give you. That thy hand, that's God's hand, might be with me. See, look at God. He walks with me and he talks with me. That thou, God, would keep me from evil. Doesn't that sound great? Doesn't that just sound wonderful? What about the verse? All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. This is not church age. This is a Jew in the family of Judah, I would assume, under the Old Testament law. And I would assume that the fact is, by the response of passage of verse number 10, Jabez did what he could as far as obeying God. Watch. And it may not grieve me. And God granted, that's the first time that word shows up, granted him that which he requested. So, oh, it bless me, God. Enlarge me, God. And God be with me. And keep me from evil. And I don't want to be grieved. Look at the prosperity. Now, let's look at all the Bible passages from Genesis to Revelation about this man that fills bookshelves at the, at the Christian bookstores and church libraries and probably got many, many servants. Ready? First, go to 1 Chronicles 4, 9. Okay. Now, go to 1 Chronicles 4, 10. That's the only place Job, Jabez is. Two passages of scripture because of great, wonderful things that God can do for you. Out of context for the church age. Because look at Paul. And there, <coughs> there was ever a Christian ever in the Bible that done what God wanted him to do. That was on it. Wrote to the churches. Was settled the churches. Began you know, the ministry of the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again according to the scriptures. You better watch out because you may have Satan in your pulpit. The guy was jailed. The guy ha had lack of food. He had lack of water. He was found naked. He was, he was amongst robbers. He was amongst shipwrecks he was uh beaten he was stoned he was in jail and look at jabez but when you got a a bible that has i love my bible it has years it says bc 404 4004 as far as J, J Bez stands, you know what that BC stands for? Before Christ. Christ has not even shown up. There is no Calvary. And I would tell you, I would assume by God granting him, I am going to assume by what the law says that if you do what I tell you to do, you do my camp commandments, you do my work, you do the law, you do the testimony, God will bless you. And I, I can think that for the fact is that that's how he became honorable and mentioned in a boring book like Chronicles. Let's give him that much credit. Oh, this name, this name, oh, this name, these headache names. Oh, man, who's that? Is it a city? Is it a place? Is it, uh, where am I? I forgot who I'm talking about. Am I in Judah? Am I in Simeon? Where am I talking about? And here's this man in two verses that God says, hey, 
Stick that in there. I'll give I'll give the credit. I'll give credit where credit's due. The books about J Pass, at least they found it in Chronicles. I'll give him that much credit. I personally have not ever heard a message about J Pass. I have been I have studied J Pass in my courses. There's a lot to learn from him. You know what Jabez has the nerve to do? He has the nerve to say, God, I'm going to ask you. All right, so that's Jabez. Verse 11. Back to these names again. Shelob, the brother of Shua, beget Meor, which was the father of Eshton. It could be a person or it could be a city. Some of these, we don't know. I read the other day that it said, as far as Joseph's coats of many colors, we know it's a coat. But the writing for many colors, we don't really, they say, the scholars say, we don't really know in the translation. That's all I'm going to say about that. There are things we don't know today. We don't know where some of these places are. They may be just being discovered today. But the father asked me, because then he got Esto begat Beth Rafa. All right, a city cannot produce a city. So remember I said these fathers here, you know, the father of, the father of, could be possibly cities. That rule does not fit through because Estra does not produce a child if it's a city. So now you got to rightly divide again and you got to read the words and you got to read the context. This father of, it's been cities, it's been towns. This one is a person. They may have been all persons. There's no, there have probably been people out there who named their children Caroline, James. We're in a difficult book as far as names in First Chronicles. But we're giving it a shot. We're giving it a lot better than most Christians do. And Pasoa and Tinaniah, the father of Iron Nash Hash. Now, I can't tell you much about that, but I can tell you what the meaning of Iron Nash Hash, whatever that name is. It means Serpent City. These are the men of Rekana. That's a city. The sons of Kenaz, Othanel, Shariah, the sons of Othanel, Hatha. And I believe there was an Othanel that married Caleb's brother. I don't know if this is the same one. And Mena Thali begat Ophrah, and Shariah begat Joab. That's not the Joab of David's men. The father of the valley of uh, Karish. Now there's a place for they were craftsmen. And you find that in Nehemiah 11 35. And you thought craftsmen, you were to find that seers. No, they're in the Bible. Now that charisman could be a person. And they could have named it for him. And the sons of Caleb, the son of Jephona. There's our Caleb. That's Jephona. That's the one of Joshua. Ira, Elah, Naim, and the sons of Elah, even Kenaz. The sons of Jahil, Zip, Zipha. You must have liked that name because he named the next one, Ah, uh, Tyra, Asriel. The sons of Ezra. Now, that's not the book of Ezra, but that's the first time Ezra shows up. It's not the same man in the book of Ezra. Where Jether married Ephraim. And Jalan, and she bare Miriam. Now, is that for Miriam, Moses' sister? She named him for him in history? I don't know, but there's Miriam. And Shamalai and Eshbol, the father of Estemioa. That's a city. And his wife, Jehudah, see the Jah, that's Jehovah. 
bear Jared, the father of Gedor, that's a city, and Heber, the father of Soko, that's a city, and Jechaziel, the father of Zena, that's a city. These are the sons of Beth by Thea. I'm giving the best shot I can. The daughter of Pharaoh. Oh! You weren't supposed to go back and get get wives of, of Egypt. Not only did he get a wife of Egypt, but he went right to the royalty. And according to the daughter of Pharaoh, Pharaoh was that God king. So he would have a father-in-law that's the God king of Egypt. Which Merit took. And the sons of his wife, Hodiah, the sister of Naaman, the father of Keliah city, and Garmanite, that's a Gentile name of the city of Kela. Yes, to Mioa, that's a city. The Makarite, they don't know what that is. The sons of Shimu were Amon and Rena, Ben Hana. Now, Ben means son of. You see, Jewish Ben, son of. House is Beth. Jah is Jehovah. El is house. Talon, the sons of Ish, Ishai were Zohath and Ben Zoab. It would be the son of Zoab and the son of Hanan. The sons of Shelah, the son of Judah. Let's go back to Genesis 38 1. Genesis 38 1. Let's read that. This, this is interesting. This is very interesting. When I, I read when we went back, when I went back, and now we're going back. Let's look at the little family here. Genesis 38 1. And we're in the family of Judah. The line of Jesus Christ. And it came to pass in the time that Judah went out from his brethren, left his brothers, and turned to a certain Adulamite, whose name was Hara. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite, whose name was Shua. And he took her and went in unto her. So he goes into Canaanite women. Now this is her son. She conceived and bared a son and called his name Ur. Or heir. And she conceived a, and bare a son and called his name Anan. This is two sons. And she yet conceived and bare a son and called his name Shelah. That's the one we're looking at right now. Three sons. We're looking at verse 5, Shelah. And he was at Chizib when she bare him. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Ur's Judah's firstborn was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. Who? Ur. Wicked. And God said, you're done. Go over to Chronicles. Chronicles 4, 21. And the sons of Shelah, there's, there's the third son. Ur, Onad, and then Shelah. The sons of Judah were... Ur. Sheila named his firstborn son after his wicked brother. Now, isn't that amazing? And Ur, the father, Lika. I'm going to assume that's a city. And we know the first city builder in the Bible, Genesis chapter 4, was Enoch, who was a murderer who hated his brother and killed him. But as far as Lika, when, you, when I look up the information I have at hand, nobody knows. And Lada, that's another son of his, the father of Meshua, that's a city. This is amazing that when I studied that, ran over to Genesis 38 to find out that Ur, that's what caught my attention with Shelah and Ur. I heard that before. And God said, I err so wicked, I slew him. And Sheila comes up and has a son, and he names him right after his wicked brother. And the families of the house of them brought fine linen. That's kind of funny. Because here you got a boy who's named after a wicked son, brother. And the Bible says fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. 
in Revelation. What a contrast. In the house of Ashbia. So in the house and the fame of the of the family of Ashbia, these posterity of Sheila, they were known for making fine linen. Clothes, whatever you do with linen. If you wanted fine linen, you wanted good linen, you wanted the work of linen, you would go to Sheila's family, who was the descendant of Judah, his third-born son. And Jochum, the men of Koziba, that's a city, and Joash and Sarah, who had the dominion in Moab, what are they doing way over in Moab, and Jashabai Jehem, these were, these are ancient things, old things to be known. What it means, I don't know. But, you know, antiquity, just history. These were the potters. Those that dwelt among plants. And hedges, that's the first time hedges shows up in the Bible. So these are your gardeners. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You got a, a, a child of Judah, third child. He has a firstborn son, and he names him after his wicked brother. And we come into the fine linen, which the Bible says is the fine linen is the righteousness of the saint. And then we run this family more, and we see the activities of Cain. The gardener. Now, isn't that it? Can those ancient things, I'm going to assume that you don't have to take, you can throw it in the ground. Can those ancient things, make, they were looking back into what Cain was? That would be ancient. Hedges. There they dwelt with the king for his work, and it doesn't say which king. Some say David, and some say maybe the Moab, verse 22. But this family, known for fine linen, known for plants, and linen, I believe, comes from the, uh, plants. Huh? And Egypt. And here they are working with plants. So they're not only making fine linen, but they're also doing plant for some king they are known of royalty do you guess who the royalty of god comes from out of judah but it's not of ur it's not of onan it's not of shila it is of uh let me get it perez which means breach the woman that was supposed to go to shila but Judah, you know, wanted to have a fling one afternoon with a woman that he thought was a prostitute, a whore. And there's something about that because that woman, Tamar, was supposed to be Sheila's wife. Because Onan went on to Tamar and because it, it, his brother died to raise up the name. Sheila never had that opportunity. It was Judah. There was something wrong with Sheila that God said, no, you ain't having nothing to do with that woman. I will have it of Judah. And I will go through Judah, Perez, and leave out Sheila. But Sheila's in the Chronicles. But not in the line of Jesus Christ. And what do you show? You see Egypt. You see Pharaoh. You see this fine linen. And you see plants. And you see cities. Do an interesting study, which I'm not going to do. But do an interesting study along with Cain. And we're going to stop right there. Because I think we're done enough. Take a little break. But Lord willing, next time we're going to. We're done with. By the way, we're done with Judah. We're going to pick up Simeon next time, Lord willing. But why was Judah first? Because he's of Jesus Christ. So we'll stop right there.